well. It is spring and hair season has started here in Calgary, but the Calgary Wildlife Rehabilitation Society wants to remind everyone that yes, those baby hairs are super cute, but don't touch them. Andrea Hunt is here now with why. Good morning to you, Andrea. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Can we start off with the difference between rabbits and hares? Because I'm in the Northwest and I have these giant big bunnies that are on our front lawn every day. But they're not rabbits. Yeah, it's a common question that we receive, and they're a completely different species. And the big difference at this time of year that people are going to notice is that baby rabbits are born without hair and with their eyes closed. So they're really, really vulnerable, um, and they do need their moms a lot. Whereas hares, and those are those big jack rabbits that everyone sees the all over. The ones on my front lawn. Exactly. Okay. That's they're what everyone rabbits, sees all over rabbits. the state. They're not rabbits. Those are hares. Okay. They're born fully furred with their eyes open. They can hop within hours of birth. So they're really quite independent. Oh, wow. And we're, we like to tell people just to leave them alone. They look, they're so, when they're born, they're about this big. Oh, they're, they're big. Su they're super cute. Yes. And they look really vulnerable, but they're, they're not as vulnerable as people think. And oh, okay. And we want to make sure that people are actually leaving them alone. So this is what they look like? That is a whole bunch of them. That's they, how many are there? It's like five, six? I, there's probably like ten in there or something. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, there's quite a lot of them. And is that normal? Is that how they're born, when that many usually? Um, they'd, they'd be born in litters of like maybe six to eight. Um, so, but they're not, they're not going to be together. You're not going to see a bunch of baby hairs like oh, that. You're going to see them looking so like more weird. like that. And the mom puts them in different spots in the yard. So that's her protective strategy to keep her baby safe. So when they're born, she puts one over here, one over here. So if a predator finds them, that it's only going to take one of them, not oh. going to take all of them. It's and, strategic. Yeah, and those little babies don't have a smell. So that's another reason why she leaves them alone. So she only comes back twice a day to feed only them. Only twice a day? Yeah, dawn and dusk. And so you're not going to see that mom around. And that's why a lot of people mistakenly think that they're actually orphaned when they are not. Oh. Um, and hares do very poorly in captivity, unfortunately. Oh. They're, they're a prey animal, so they're okay. pretty stressed by a big predator like humans. Right. And so we just, um, we will, like, for our organization, we'll absolutely take them. Of course. If they're legitimately orphaned or if they're injured. But most of those animals aren't orphaned. So when they come in, when they're not orphaned, not only does that animal not do as well in captivity as it would with its moms, but it also taxes our resources, and we have really right. limited resources that we would rather spend on the animals that do need our care of and course. that are in need of human intervention. Okay. So I've seen those little baby rabbits or hares that we were showing. Those little hares, I've seen them by themselves under the big leaves in the backyards, under the plants. So you're saying, is it okay to actually go look at them? Because I've got little kids and they always want to go and look at them. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on that? I would say, like, look from a distance. Okay. Try not to touch them. That They find that very stressful. But if they are in a spot that is, like, really unsuitable, like maybe behind the wheel of a car or, oh, right. like, at the bottom of a slide, something like that, like, it's a, a a clearly unsuitable spot for that animal to be. You can actually just pick them up and move them within about 150 meters okay. of where they were found. So the is way there any risk of our smell going onto them or anything nope, like that? No, the mom won't won't reject them because okay. of our smell. I mean, it's not ideal, right? But if that's what needs to happen because some, it's it's just not very it's not safe for that animal, then absolutely move them under a bush or or in your yard. And it needs to be about a backyard space, so 150 meters. Okay. And the mom finds them. At those twice a day by calling out to them. So she makes little sounds. No they, kidding. They make sounds back, and sometimes people hear them at night. What does it sound like? It sounds a little bit like birds. Oh, like, really? But wow. But birds are like are diurnal, so they're up during the day. So if it's starting to get dark and you're hearing all these birds, <laughs> it's probably the hair. It's probably the hair. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Now, you do have a hotline. Do you want to give out that number? Absolutely. It's 403-239-2488. So we encourage people to phone if they're unsure, like they don't know what to do. Right. They see an animal and they think, I think it might need help, but I'm not sure. Please just phone us. We'd be very happy to listen to your situation and let you know what you sh what we think you should what do, you should whether ask. an animal does need to come in or doesn't need to come in. And that extends to more than just hares, any wild animal that you find and you're not sure whether it needs help or not, please give us a call. We'd be happy to help. Wonderful. Andrea, thank you so much. I learned so much this morning. There Thanks you go. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much. All right. When we come back, we'll have more hockey action from Winsport this morning.